Imagine you have a web application with lots of different services or features like a shopping website with product listing, user profiles, and reviews. Now, you want to create a special way for other computer programs like mobile apps or other websites to talk to these different parts of the website. Now, API subdomains are like having separate doors to enter different parts of the application. Instead of going through the main entrance, you have separate doors for each part of the site. For example, if you want to look at products, you use the products.example.com door. If you want to see user profiles, you use the profiles.example.com. And if you want to read reviews, you use the reviews.example.com door. Each door or subdomain leads to a different parts of your website and computer programs can use these doors to talk to the specific part they need. It's a way to keep things organized and make sure each part of your application gets the right information and request. So API subdomains help organize and separate the different functions of the website's programming interface. So with this example, I'm pretty sure now you have an idea what API subdomains are. They are basically used to provide access to various functionalities and data through standardized interfaces. Before moving on further with the video and start enumerating API subdomains, we need to know what are the common use cases of API subdomains and how you can differentiate between them. Subdomains are used to specify different versions for the API. For example, version 1.api.example.com for version 1 of the API and, and version 2.api.example.com for version 2 of the API. This allows developers to use the versions of the API that suits their needs and maintain backward compatibility. So finding these versions can be useful for us hackers. For example, if the developer decided to use the new version 2 of the API due to vulnerability that is present in the version 1 and the application is using version 2 but the version 1 is still accessible, then the attacker can use version 1 of the API to perform malicious actions by manipulating the request for example, by using Burp Suite or Zap, you get the point. The second reason why it's used is service segmentation. As we talked in the first example, subdomains can represent different services. For example, products.api.example.com for product-related endpoints and user.api.example.com for user-related endpoints. We already saw that. The third reason is access control. Subdomains can be used to control access to specific parts of the API based on user roles or permissions. For example, admin.api.example.com for administrative functions that is restricted to administrators and public.api.example.com for publicly accessible endpoints. If an attacker finds an API that is restricted to admins but has poor access controls or have default passwords, then it can be exploited by them. Now you get the point like why it's important to find API subdomains. Okay, so these are the basic ones you needed to know. Now let's talk about API subdomain enumeration. API subdomain enumeration can potentially expose subdomains associated with an API, which can be exploited by attackers now, let's talk about what are the ways through which we can do API subdomain integration. Well, you can use passive reconnaissance using tools like search engines, OSINT, or public databases, or Shodan. For this video, we are going to look how to perform API subdomain integration using a mask. So I'm going to go through both passive and active reconnaissance. The command would go like this, amas inum d twitter.com grep api. So this command will enumerate subdomains for twitter.com and filter the subdomains that contain the term API. As you can see. Now if you want to perform a passive immersion, you can just add hyphen passive in the command and this will use publicly available sources such as search engine and OSINT platforms to gather subdomains associated with the target. Now, the next thing you can do is brute forcing subdomains. So this is the command imas enum hyphen active and then brute force. Then you have to provide a word list. This is the word list that I'm using. I'm gonna give the link in the description. I found this on GitHub. 
and to find the live subdomains, you can also use HTTPX to filter the live ones. Simply use the grep command to find and filter API subdomains. So this is how you can use a mask to find API subdomains actively and passively. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I'll see you in the next one.